Bulvinaka and welcome to the Social Plug. I'm your host, D, and joining us today in studio, we have our guest, Mr. Shailendra Prasad. He represents Vodafone Fiji and he is the head of their e commerce and corporate affairs department. He's with us today to tell us more about M Paisa. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Prasad, and thank you very much for joining us today. Good afternoon, Dion, and thank you for the opportunity. You're most welcome. And getting straight into the thick of things. Yes. What is M Paisa? Well, first of all, I, I just wanted to give a brief introduction in terms of my association sure. with Empresa. I, 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 I have been uh, with Empresa since its inception in June 2010, so it's almost uh, 10 years now uh, when Empresa came into being. Uh, so Empresa basically is a mobile wallet service. Uh, it uh, creates a virtual wallet on your phone in which you can keep electronic money as a balance and as and when you want to use it uh, you are able to either withdraw that money or now uh, you are able to also make payments pay your bill send money to anybody or receive money from overseas uh, from about 94 different countries so it's actually a, not a physical wallet but a virtual wallet in your mobile phone uh, so it's it's quite easy for people to actually use the service. Well, thank you for that. Now, uh, how does Mpaisa actually work, Mr. Prasad? Okay. Uh, so any customer that is on the Vodafone network, that includes Inc. Mobile customers as well, who register for a SIM card to access uh, mobile services, are by default registered into Mpaisa uh, services. However, for them to be able to use the Mpaisa service, they need to first uh, activate the account. Uh, what it means is they will need to create a, uh, a PIN for themselves, uh, you know, a password so that every time they do a transaction, they are able to use a security PIN so that it keeps your balance intact and safe on the mobile, uh, on your mobile wallet in, in, in M-Pesa. So uh, the, the registration is quite easy actually. If you register for a SIM, you are by default registered into M-Pesa. All you need to do is create a, a, a password or a PIN to activate your account. And then you can go to an agent, deposit money, just like you would do when you go to the bank and deposit money in your account. Once you have balance in your Mpesa account, then you are able to use a number of services. I see. Now you made mention about uh, activating an Mpesa account. Mm -hmm. Now for our viewers joining us on the social plug, how can you activate an Mpesa account? Would you mind taking us through the steps? Sure. So. If you if you got Vodafone or uh, Inc Mobile SIM, you dial star one eight one hash, and you call. And if you are already registered for Mpesa, it will give you a set of menu uh, for Mpesa, which tells you like you can withdraw money or send money or pay bills, etc. That means you have already activated your account. If you haven't, then it will give you two options. One is request for an account activation code, and the second one is activate your Mpesa account. So if you dial star 181 hash, and if you haven't activate your account, activated your account, you can choose option one and ask or request for a code. Once you do that, a four digit code will come on your mobile phone in the form of a text message. Uh, so what you do after that is dial star 181 hash again, and this time you choose option two to activate your account and enter the four digit pin that came in your text message. Once you have done that, it will prompt you to create your own password, which means you will create your own secret password to the Mpesa account so that every time you do an Mpesa transaction, you will use your secret pin. That secret pin should not be given to anybody under any circumstances. That's your pin that protects your account. And of course, the pin can be changed at uh, any time to the user's preference. Yes, and because this, is, uh, this service is personal to you, and you have the mobile device in your hand. If at any point in time you think your, your password has been compromised, you can change it on the fly with change password option in the menu. All right, now obvious, it's obvious rather that with the effects of COVID-19 hitting us through 2020, that Mpaisa being a mobile wallet, as you mentioned earlier, has its benefits. Now, can you please give us a couple of benefits uh, in regards to Mpaisa? Surely, surely. Uh, you know, as, as I earlier alluded to you, uh, you know, a, a lot of people also receive money from overseas from families. During COVID lockdown, uh, you know, a number of money sending outlets such as Western Union, etc. had been basically been on a lockdown mode because a lot of these uh, companies provide over-the-counter service. People were not able to actually visit the outlets to send money. 
So people started uh, investigating or, or trying to use the digital channels. Uh, and, and if I can give you some numbers, pre-COVID, we used to get about $2 million every month into M-Pesa directly from overseas. That has increased from $2 million to $8.5 million per month in the, in the two months following COVID. And we are steadily seeing that a lot more people are sending money through this channel because it's quite easy. So that's one, international money transfer. The other one, obviously, is you can send money locally to anyone. Uh, we have also introduced an M-Pesa app for smartphone users, which provides a scan and pay option where people can now go and do shopping and basically scan the QR code on the counter and pay for their grocery shopping. You can pay your water bills, your electricity bills, and most of these services are provided at no cost to the consumer. Uh, so if you are using the service, it's convenient, it's highly accessible, you know, you can use it 24 seven and you are able to make uh, payments more so in the payment space. It's very, very easy for you to actually uh, do these uh, transactions very, very easily. Thank you for that, Mr. Prasad. And if you've just joined us on the social plug right now in studio, our guest today, Mr. Shailendra Prasad, who is Vodafone Fiji's head of commerce and corporate affairs. Now, moving on, Mr. Prasad, a lot of people are very concerned with security sure. and the safety and well-being of themselves, not to, not to mention the, uh, their hard-earned money. Now, for the viewers, is the user's money safe in a mobile account and how safe is M-Paisa? I would, I would rate it as, as very, very secure uh, for two reasons. In fact, it is more secure than you having an account in the bank. And I tell you why. When you have uh, a mobile wallet like M-Pesa, as I told you earlier, you need to create a secret password, which yes. is only known to you. But you know, when somebody has a mobile phone today, they also set a pin for their screen. Yes, they do. So before you actually go into M-Pesa account, you need to put enter another set of password or some pattern uh, that people use to lock their or unlock their mobile phone. So you have two levels of security. One, first you need to unlock the screen of the mobile phone. And once you go into M-Pesa and want to do a transaction, you then have to enter a PIN, which is the PIN to the M-Pesa account uh, to be able to conduct an, uh, a transaction. So there's double, double security in that respect. Also, uh, a lot of people may ask, what if my mobile phone is lost? Now, I ask you a question. What if your mobile, what if your wallet is lost with a lot of money in it? Once it's gone, it's gone. Pretty much. With the mobile phone, when, it's, uh, when you have balance in your M-Pesa account and if your phone is lost, your money remains intact because nobody else knows your PIN. And you can easily go to a Vodafone outlet, ask for a replacement SIM card, and we will make sure that whatever balance was on your you know, previous SIM uh, is returned to your new number intact. So it's very, very secure. Thank you for that, Mr. Prasad. Now, moving on, one question that many people uh, did make a note of was, where does someone go to deposit money into an M-Paisa account? How so, does that happen? So, we, uh, there are a couple of options uh, how people can get money in the M-Paisa wallet. One, as I said, uh, family sending money directly into the M-Paisa account. So, <clears throat> anybody can transfer money. I can transfer money to you or somebody from overseas can send money directly into M-Pesa. So there's one way you get money in your M-Pesa wallet. The second way is if you have got cash, you can walk to over 400 uh, M-Pesa agents Fiji wide. Uh, these include uh, a number of businesses like Shop and Save, New World. Uh, we have a number of independent uh, outlets. Some of the banks are also on board as agents. We have post Fiji outlets. Fiji wide that also act as M-Pesa agents. So all these places you can give cash over the counter and uh, they will then uh, deposit that money in your M-Pesa account just as you do in a bank. Uh, you can also, we also have the option where those who are in the workforce and if they want part of their wages and salaries to come directly into M-Pesa, they can sign a salary deduction and we can work with, your com with the organizations to make sure that instead of you going and depositing money physically, the, uh, every payday a certain amount comes directly into, into your M-Pesa account. And once you have balance in M-Pesa, you are able to use it. All right, very interesting. So there's a number of different ways yes. that an M-Pesa user can get that money into Ab their absolutely. account. And of course, all absolutely safe and secure. And at no cost for depositing money in your M-Pesa account. Now, it seems like we've come to uh, the end of the first half of our questioning. And moving on to the second half, a simple thing is, how do you get more users to actually use the M-Pesa application? I guess, you know, when, when it 
when you talk about financial services, <clears throat> the uptake is generally a bit slow because people don't want to let go or lose their hard-earned dollars, you know, if they don't feel confident. So over a period of time, there has been a slow start. Obviously, the younger generation who are more, con uh, you know, used to the technology mm -hmm. of today, they are the ones who are the rapid adopters. Uh, but as, as time has gone on, a lot more people see the value of it. Obviously, we have done a lot of education and awareness. We have signed uh, organizations like South Pacific Business, Business Development, whose entire 6,000 members receive their small micro loans directly onto the M-Pesa account. So these are women businesses out there in rural areas who run micro businesses. So a lot of these uh, you know, customers are now getting uh, well versed with the service. Yes. So they are they are using this service. Then on top of that, uh, as we introduced other cashless payment op options such as um, uh, M-Pesa QR Pay, which is scan and pay, a lot more people feel comf uh, comfortable not being uh, not carrying cash, but rather just on their mobile phone they have some balance, and as and when they need it, they are able to do it. But what we see most important to this is. Uh, if we can have uh, integration of M-Pesa with people's bank accounts, which means if I have money sitting in the bank and I am somewhere in Kandavu, I don't need to physically come to the mainland to access my funds. If that integration <coughs> happens, then people can still be in Kandavu and move money from the bank account directly into M-Pesa account, and then they are able to make payments at a shop in Kandavu. Now, that is really expanding the digital payment ecosystem, which makes it much, much easier for people to use the service. So, of course, uh, making it very attractive and convenient for the people to use, especially those uh, at the grassroots level. And those in the rural and maritime areas, you know, where, you know, you don't have basic banking and financial service. Uh, so, to bring a lot of these people into the mainstream economy, the first thing that needs to happen is they should be able to transact as and when from wherever. Thank you for that. Now, moving on, where exactly is mobile money headed in the next? Um, in my view, uh, if you look at the global trends, you look at countries like China, they proce processed $18 trillion, US $18 trillion worth of transactions through mobile payments such as WeChat and Alipay. You see uh, mpesa like product in terms of QR scan and pay through mobile in India through Paytm or Bharat QR. In many, many other countries, this is, this is the growing space. <clears throat> Whilst telecommunication services in, in most respects have kind of matured, uh, a lot of telcos are now looking at what next. And mobile payment is the next big opportunity because it also brings a lot more people into the yeah, into the economy in terms of greater financial inclusion, a more digital inclusion and to be able to transact more often. So I think <clears throat> the future for mobile payments is great and uh, we, we continue to make sure that we invest in that, in that area to, to make services available to more people. It's interesting you say that Mr. Prasad because that leads us to our next question and this one targeted at uh, members of our audience who may be in the business sector. Now the question actually is, will m be integrated into the financial sector? I hope so, because that's the missing bit. That's the missing piece. You know, if we want to take financial services to more people uh, across the country for greater financial inclusion or economic inclusion, then one of the very important aspect of this is that people should be able to access their funds wherever they keep it conveniently. And because mobile phones are available across the country and almost in everybody's hand, it provides <coughs> greater access for people to be able to access their funds, provided there is greater linkage or integration with uh, all the financial system. So if I have money sitting in the bank account, you know, the, gone are the days where I need to go to the bank to access the funds. I should be able to access the funds from wherever. Yes. And that, if that integration happens, then people should be able to seamlessly move money uh, either from the mobile wallet to the bank account or from the bank account to the mobile wallet. And once that happens, if the money starts circulating faster in the economy and by more people, the multiplier effect of that is greater and the economy grows for everybody to benefit from. Now, moving on, what do you think, in your estimation, are some of the critical factors for the growth of, growth of m here in Fiji? Uh, 
<clears throat> one of one of the most important things, as I said, is the integration, the the whole integration of the uh, of the financial system. The other one is obviously we need greater education and awareness, and some of these can be even <clears throat> taken at at the primary, secondary school level when when kids before in schools we used to have curriculums about yes. learning basic budgeting or stuff. I think with technology and, and the, some of the services that are now available like in PESA, some of these services could also be introduced in the financial literacy program in schools where kids should be able to learn how to use technology and financial systems to be able to save or, or use many other services that are available. Uh, make a very good point there, Mr. Prasad, and yeah. we certainly hope that uh, the people at the Ministry of Education might be uh, considering this. Seeing as, as we move forward into the future with the development in technology, I mean, this type of e-commerce is something which is fairly regular. <clears throat> yeah, and, and because mobile payments will more and more be used, I think the earlier we introduce uh, children to these services, they learn how to keep secure their accounts, they learn how, how to budget, how to save, uh, because, you know, online, once you go online, uh, there are a lot of businesses that try and push you many kind of offers. So instead of going into impulse buying, people are more informed and, and use their money wisely. All right. Now, moving on, what are other countries doing in terms of in this space as well? I mean, Empire, of course, is based off similar applications or platforms, you'd say. But what would the larger countries in the world, the more developed countries be up yes. to? So the mobile payment is really in a growth phase globally on the back of the penetration of mobile phones because mobile phones are now accessible by about 95% of the population worldwide. Uh, so on the back of this device, because it provides, provides greater connectivity and access, uh, and especially so with smartphones, um, uh, a lot more countries are now using the mobiles uh, on the back of mobile to offer other services. Uh, in China, for, for example, WeChat and Alipay process close to about 18 trillion dollars mm. US uh, 18 trillion dollars worth of transaction uh, payment transactions. In fact, if you go to China and go go with cash, they look at you in a very very different way because for them cash is dead pretty much. It's all about mobile payments. In in India, you have uh, you know Paytm, Bharat QR, and many of the Asian countries have actually uh, taken the lead in this space. So mobile payment is becoming globally very, very <clears throat> popular. Uh, one, because it doesn't need cash, so it's much, much safer. Every transaction you do is, transact, uh, is, is uh, uh, cashless and electronic and therefore leaves an electronic trail, which means it's very, very transparent for audit and recording purposes, for government in terms of accountability. So because of all these benefits that come with this, uh, with this mobile payments, uh, M-Pesa kind of products are really, really becoming very popular in the world. Thank you for that, sir. And uh, yes, our second last question. How do you learn from best practices and use them here in Fiji? Would there be any such examples you'd be willing to share with us? Yes. See, <clears throat> when we uh, developed our M-Pesa, M-Pesa is a homegrown uh, Vodafone product. But when we developed M-Pesa uh, as a mobile money platform, uh, one of the countries that was the or the first country to to offer such service was Kenya, and the product was known as M-Pesa. So, because it was a Vodafone uh, uh, owned company, Safaricom, <coughs> we had uh, a lot of learnings that we took from that company. And in fact, when we were developing the M-Pesa platform, we had gotten in one guy from Safaricom, from the M-Pesa initial M-Pesa team, to work with us. So. Uh, he shared with us a lot of the learnings that he had taken on board when they developed the product. So in fact, <clears throat> when we launched our own product, uh, our product was possibly more superior than what M-Pesa in Kenya launched. And in fact, we launched it in 2010 and in 2011 we went on to win an award for the best mobile money deployment, deployment in the world at the GSMA Awards in Spain. Thank you for that, sir. And yes, to our final question now. What would you, as the head of e-commerce there at Vodafone, like members of the public to know about m -Paisa? I guess one of the things that I wanted to say is, uh, because I have been with the service from day one, uh, since inception, since it was launched, I'm actually very passionate about this product because I can see the benefit this service can provide to thousands of Fijians, particularly those 
in the rural areas in remote areas and uh, one of the things that <clears throat> covid has taught us is that the digital channels are becoming far much more important to businesses you look at a number of businesses particularly in the west <clears throat> in the western belt uh, you know many of them have gone out of business or were not able to sustain the cost such as uh, renting uh, or paying rental cost for a shop space many of these businesses if they come online we have launched a service called vitikat which is like the ebay or uh, you know or the alipay of fiji where or amazon of fiji where people can go and list their products and service can use the mpesa uh, or, or the customer can you can use mpesa to make pay, payment for the goods and service that is provided there and these goods and services can be shipped to the or, or uh, you know delivered to the customers so what mpesa <clears throat> does provide is for many of these businesses micro entrepreneurs who are not able to run a shop space uh, to or rent a shop space to be able to do business can actually go online in the virtual world create a virtual shop list their product and service and then have mpesa integrated as a payment option and you know as an example if somebody <clears throat> some farmer in reki reki were to produce a hundred bottles of honey many a time many a time what happens is the middleman comes and buys the honey at five dollars and comes and sells it in the market for twenty dollars thirty dollars forty dollars so the, the the fruit of the labor is actually borne by the person who is the middleman and not the mm. farmer themselves through this platform they can come online uh, list the products find customers around the world and then people can make payment through the mobile payment or visa or mastercard if it's integrated and then they are able to sell the product at a higher price and get fruit of their labor more than what a third party gets so you know what i'm what i'm saying to the people here is open up to the fact <clears throat> that electronic channels provide a lot more opportunity mobile payments also provide you the opportunity for safe uh, cashless payment options and you are guaranteed when you are paid using electronic channels you are actually guaranteed that the money will hit your bank in a cash based economy there is a chance that somebody can dip the hands in the in the till and take some money without you even realizing it but through electronic channels when somebody pays it actually goes and hits your bank account so i urge uh, members of the public to please look at some of these new products and services and mpesa for one i feel is uh, is a game ch ch game changer for payments in fiji thank you very much sir that's all we have time for today on the social plug ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your time and your company we also thank our guests as well mr shailendra prasad the uh, vodafone fiji head of e-commerce and corporate affairs social plug fiji click on the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest videos